Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reading you guys two scary ghost stories. They're not really scary, they're just kind of creepy, but um, it's from this book, Real Ghost Stories. So these aren't my stories, okay, I just want that to be known. These are coming from this book by Steiger? Steiger? I'll write it in the description. Okay. So the first one that I want to read to you guys is called Eerie Footsteps in the Attic. So the townhouse that Karen and her husband bought in July 1992 was only 11 years old and in good condition. Shortly after they moved in, she began hearing someone walking in the upstairs hallway. At first, she thought it was her son sneaking out of bed, which sometimes it was. But other times when she went to investigate, he was in bed asleep. Karen never said anything about the footsteps to her husband, making the assumption that the sounds were the result of the house settling or her imagination. So, my husband is disabled, so he is home all day. Soon he began telling me that he kept hearing someone walking upstairs when nobody else was home but him. He said that the, that he heard the sounds frequently, so I told him that I also... That I was also hearing things at night. Then our four-year-old son started telling us about the mice that were in his room at night. I went into his room and lay down with him one night. I heard so many scratching noises on the floor and sounds like children running around the room that I scooped him up and got out of there. I put him in bed with us and then we heard the walking sounds in the hallway. The next night, while my husband and I were in bed, we heard someone walking in our bedroom. The sounds started on my side of the bed, moved around the bed, and then went out of the room, down the hallway, and down the stairs. One night, my son came running out of his room into our bedroom, wide-eyed and out of breath, and said that there was a big dog in his room, and he wouldn't go back in there. He was awake until almost dawn before he fell asleep again. In the first month after we moved into the townhouse, we went through at least 100 light bulbs. We couldn't keep them burning. The ceiling fixtures and the bathroom, hallway, and kitchen lights blew out constantly and within hours of each other. The previous owners had left several boxes and an old lead mirror in a plain wooden frame in the attic. I brought the mirror down from the attic and decided to hang it at the end of the hallway opposite our son's bedroom door. There weren't any noises until after I hung it. And most of the noises were in that hallway or our bedrooms off of that hallway. My mother told me to get rid of the mirror and the noises stopped after I carried it out and set it with the trash. Next story. So this story is called Join Me in the Crawl Space. It's, um, we don't know, he did, the person doesn't know who it's from. Anyways. So the personal experience of Anonymous. One day I was working with a friend in a brand new home in Ogden, Utah. We were doing the heating and air conditioning. My friend was checking the furnace and discovered it had a bad transformer, so he left to go get a new one. While he was gone, I continued installing the ductwork. I got an eerie feeling and looked over my shoulder and saw an old woman standing at the base of the stairs. I figured she was the homeowner. I said hi and asked her if she needed anything. She just shook her head and smiled. I went about my business. Then I felt the same eerie feeling. I looked over my shoulder and there she was, about five feet from me. I got off my ladder and said, can I help you? And she smiled and once again shook her head no. Just then I heard my partner pulling around the house. I turned to see where the woman was, and she was already by the base of the stairs, about 50 feet away. I said, are you sure you don't need anything? She just looked at me and motioned with her finger for me to come with her. And of course, I said, no way. Then I heard my friend enter the home on the first floor. The old woman again motioned for me to follow her. She was backing toward a crawl space just under the stairs. I took my eyes off her for a second to try and figure out where my friend was. And when I looked back, I saw the most horrifying old woman motioning to me with a bony, leathery finger. At this time, she said, get over here. I watched her disappear into the crawl space. 
That was it. I got out of there fast. Finally, my friend joined me and I told him the story. He just laughed and told me to stay outside if it would make me feel better. And that's exactly what I did. I did some research on that area and learned that most of the land had been used as a Native American tribal burial ground. To this day, I haven't returned to that site. So, yeah, those are two stories I thought were interesting. I'll probably, every once in a while, read two stories from this book to you guys. So, yeah, this is cool. So, um, I have a question for y'all. Tell me a ghost story in the comments. Um, tell me a ghost story. Tell me your favorite scary movie. Um, yeah. So, bye.